do you know how cringe it is to listen to you lot, right? Bournemouth have form in this. But we were, we were 2 0 down to Bournemouth earlier on this season and came back. And you lot are the most cringe worthy, desperate, lot, honestly, try hard bunch of like, fan, fan base I've ever heard in my life. You are, the luckiest, you are the luckiest club I've ever, ever come across in my life. You scored in the eighth minute, you scored the eighth minute of the, of the six minutes added on. And you celebrate like a kid that's just been given a packet of Percy Pigs, honestly. Dan, do you know what I heard there? What I heard in your what? your wonderful rant? I heard, wow, 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 wow. I heard, oh, God, we lost 1-0 to Wolves at the weekend. What's the best thing I can do on a Monday morning? I can call up TalkSport and cry about how much Arsenal fans are having a great season. And all we are is depressed. And all, we hate our up. manager. I've our manager's, he's a born winner, but guess what? He can't even get Spurs to win. What's happening, Dan? Don't worry about Arsenal. Worry about yourselves. Well, he's, not, he's, he's not even there at the moment for a start. And, yeah, you're, and we you're were, actually doing better without him. We didn't play too badly on Saturday, but we got a bit unlucky. But it's not about Spurs. It's about, it's about Arsenal. You're right. It's about Arsenal. Arsenal. Top of the league, Arsenal. <laughs> where are, where about, are Spurs about, at the moment? How about, much about, do you think you're going to hang on to fourth place, Dan? We, I think we will, because I think yesterday was a bit of an anomaly with... Um, with, with Liverpool winning that convincingly. So, I mean, look, you should be talking about United, really, this morning, but... Oh, we have. We've spent a whole time talking about United. <laughs> We've spent a little bit of time talking about Arsenal. And don't worry, we're also going to spend a bit of time talking about Blow Spurs you. as well. Jamie O'Hara is coming on, your, your team legend. He's coming on at 8.30, so I bet you'll be tuned in for that. Just one other thing. Every little thing is falling your way as well. Like every is it? Thing, you, you've had no, you've had no <laughs> oh, major injury. No, no major injury apart from Jesus. Apart from Jesus, our you've top got, goal scorer. Hang got, on a minute. Oh. What? Got, and Partey, got, one of our most important players. Oh. You got full of. Well, like, he was out for a couple of games. Come on. He was out for uh, more than a couple of games. Then, but then does that not got, count? So you've, got full, full, you've got Fulham next week who are missing, the, missing their best player. Brilliant. You sound like Adrian Durham. Is this Adrian Durham? I just got to check. No, no, Is this Aid no, this no, morning? No, but, no, but I, no, but I no? agree with Adrian Durham on the fact that you are uh, uh, about your luck. It's, hey, how about, uh, how, how's your luck signing Richarlison? He hasn't even scored yet. Uh, yeah, not great. That one, but. <laughs> Dan, it's been lovely speaking to you this morning. Enjoy the rest of your miserable season and make sure you call up again later. People are calling up to have their say. John's a Liverpool fan. Good morning, John. Morning, John. Yeah, I think everybody's tech, I think everybody's getting in the knickers in a twist over nothing here. It's only the changing of the Champions League. It's not the Premiership, FA Cup, or anything like that. And I think the Champions League has had its day. I really do. And they're opening it up. What now? To more uh, another eight teams or ten teams or whatever. And you're playing teams that are dead rubbers. You want to be playing big teams. And all them big teams play. I would much rather, every week, we can either go to Real Madrid or we can go wherever in Europe, Juventus, which is obviously Turin, uh, than, than, you know, Spartak, Moscow or something. uh, And not only that, these top clubs, they bring all the money in. Why shouldn't they be uh, uh, rewarded for it as well? Well, you're a Liverpool fan. It just took you, what, 30 years to win the Premier League and now you don't mind about it anymore. What, the Premier League? Who, who says we're not playing in the Premier League? You're not allowed to play that. in the Premier League. No, they're, no. They're no. The saying if you do it, you won't. Yeah. In second to court, they cannot stop us. No, there is a rule. There's a rule that we just read out on the show this morning. L9 in the Premier League rules. You can't do it. You're prohibited for doing it. So, so the Premier League wants to, wants to get rid of their golden gooses just just to throw the toys out the plan. It'll never happen. That is exa- finger was right. This league will go ahead. That is exactly what they said in a statement this morning, John. Literally what they said. Who did? The Premier League. They said they will throw them out. Yeah, but this is all negotiations. They won't do it. Would you throw your top horses out the best races? You wouldn't at all, would you? Well, why would you put it in the, in the rule book then? Why would you have a rule to say that you can't do it? There's loads of rules in loads of rule books. It doesn't mean they're going to use them, does it? <laughs> yeah, they usually where? does. That's the whole point of having rules. I don't believe it for one minute. It's and good. It's also, rules. John, you mentioned there you'd love to travel around and go to Real Madrid and go to all these different... It's great that you can afford that. The average Joe can't afford that. So everybody's it's a race to the bottom, is it? Well, why, why would it be a race to the bottom? Well, you're saying if people can't go, where they're not allowed to go. No, I'm saying that it's unfair that you can afford to go, Why but the rest of the unfair? fan base Why can't. Why is it a race to the bottom all the time? It's like Sheffield United. 
you know, when they put the vote against, oh, we need five players in it. No, we're not doing it because we ain't got the players. You're in the Premiership. This is supposed to be the best league in the world. Get the players. If not, get down. I'm glad you said that at the end because it certainly won't be the best Premier League or the best league in general in the world if six of the best teams or perceived best teams leave it and go somewhere else. Uh, John, thank you very much for your call. John is a Liverpool fan, by the way. Listen, something despicable happened yesterday. I was listening to the radio and I heard Simon Jordan speak and I agreed with every word. And I went and I tried to take my brain out of my head and give it a wash in the sink. He actually came out and said every other manager, I mean, it wasn't groundbreaking, we all think it. Every other manager in, in the Premier League has his moment where he does the same thing. We've grown up watching the likes of Jose Mourinho of sprint course. up touchlines, like scream at people. Like we, Pep Guardiola <laughs> literally kicked a bottle and it hit someone in the bench the other week. Yeah, like, it was yeah. too, It was completely accidental, of course. But he loses his head all the time. Do you not remember the twice thing? Like twice. Yeah, like that Anfield, one. Yeah. It happens all the time. And when other managers, Klopp ran onto the pitch yes. and celebrated with Alisson he literally ran onto the pitch and guess what we loved it we love all of it because it's passion we always talk about players having to become these robots don't make the managers do that as well look if he steps out of line <clears throat> if he really steps out of line you think it's dangerous then the referees are going to deal with it but this kind of um, this this thing that's happening at the moment where everybody's rallying against Mikel Arteta is exactly what Jordan Simon Jordan said which was the fact that he's a Johnny come lately in, in Simon Jordan's words they're not mine um, Johnny come lately everybody wants to pull him down because he's top of the Premier League at the moment that's the way it works like, I agree are we, Sam are we really that bothered about it I could not agree more listen the one thing that he's doing <clears throat> is affecting those players and he's affecting that stadium big time Absolutely big time. Having been there and seen it go a go behind a couple of occasions, I've, I can't remember seeing any stadium react positively like that at this moment in time, the Emirates. If he oversteps it, you get his yellow card, that'll be fine. But we can't have a, one rule for regarding coaches and it's okay for somebody to dance something down the touch and it's not okay for others. I don't have a problem with it. And I'll tell you what it is doing, it's working. Mm. And if he didn't do things like that, Guess what? You'd say he's boring. No passion. Yeah, right. They go, you go. Oh, look at Mikel Arteta. He's so uninspiring. He doesn't give us anything in interviews. He gives us short answers. Like, get over it. Come on. Like, if you're if you're genuinely that offended by what he's doing, you're watching the wrong sport. That's not what that no. means, Jay. It, it's not what it means. What it what it means is there are young players, youngsters who are watching that going. Oh, that, look at that. We're going to do that. That looks quite cool. We can do whatever we want to the referee. We're going to surround them as well. That, Laura. They do, they my, do. Here's a great my 12 example. Year old, ain't, I was a, with my 12 year old when we watched the game yesterday. Well, I'm sure your 12 year old is angelic, perfectly angelic, but there are young 12 year olds out there that aren't. So, for example, we heard from someone earlier on that was saying that the kids on the pitches where they play, they're covering their mouths. <laughs> like the Premier League footballers do because they think they're going to be their, their mouths are going to be interpreted and somebody's going to understand what they're saying so they these kids are covering their mouths kids yeah, are but they know what right and wrong is though Laura yeah but Jay that's not it this is a football pitch of course and that's the thing and if they see somebody doing it on the pitch surrounding the referee they're well, going to think just actually that's all right we make an example of Mitrovic because he's lost his rag on a football pitch how many players over the years have lost their rag on a football pitch yeah but you don't push the referee to surround the referee for fun. Yeah, but you well, don't push him, you know, Jamie. Arsenal do it this season. Everyone does it. I don't I don't agree with what he's done. But to to, to talk about banning the player for ten games Listen, Jay, is outrageous. Jay, I, I agree with you when we said ten earlier on. I winced because I thought, wow, that's way too much. That's way too many. I'm just looking back at history, though. We mentioned there Paolo Di Canio, uh, Sheffield Wednesday, 11 games. That was in 1998. David Prutton as well. He shoved the referee. He got 10 games in 2005. Luis Suarez this is a bit more extreme. Um, he faced that long... Listen, that was 10 games when he bit someone. So, listen... I, I understand that, that's a very they different... bit someone. Yeah, I know, but, but I know. In 10 games, he's lost... Mitrovic has lost his rag. Right, yes, what he done was wrong. Don't touch the referee. We all know that. Don't touch the referee. It was more to than talk that. About ten games is ridiculous. He's got sent off. He's he, he, he's made himself look a fool. He's going to get fined by his club. It, the whole world's coming down on him. But talk about ten games is just outrageous. He's got a free game ban. Fulham going to lose him for some massive games, mm. and he's had a great season. Don't you think he's disappointed walking off the pitch? We all lose our rag. I give him fifteen games. 
and they are on they are always on the edge. Every football player that's playing in the Premier League in FA Cup matches are always on the edge. Yeah, it but Jamie, you can't you can't if the referee had to walk backwards and made it a little bit softer, he was walking towards him with his head in his face. You can't do that. I, I'm 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 not, I'm not saying what he done was right. I'm not saying what he's done was right. I'm, I look I looked at it and was like, what is he doing? Mm. He's completely well, lost. He's completely lost his head. Yeah, Jay. But let's, you... but, but let's not just come. Let's not make an example of him, you know, and be like, oh, he's going to get. A I think we should. Ban. Mm. Listen, Jay. I agree with you. Like I said, I agree. I feel like ten games is a lot. I really do. And I think sometimes when you you look at individual individual incidents, Luis Suarez biting um, Branislav Ivanovic and getting a, what was it ten games there that having an equal measure with what Mitrovic did maybe that's an argument but they are officials but, but, but maybe let's just park that for a second don't, yeah, don't you think but, these problems Jay, have been coming because of because yeah. of how bad the refereeing is in the Premier League and Listen, how bad the officials are that and aside, how bad VAR is that don't aside this, I feel like this has been building up for some time the players have had enough of how bad the officials are in the Premier League and I think listen it's starting to spill over, but the referees need to have a look at themselves as well. How many times have we said the, the referees have been absolutely shambolic again, again, every single week? They're useless. They've always been bad. It doesn't mean you can push them. I'm not it saying that you can push them. Yeah, but it does. You just, said, you just said it's been boiling lose. over. Listen, it doesn't matter. There's an official on the pitch. You do what he says. What I actually think in this is that referees need to start using those cards more so that players are actually more scared to even go near them. Start using those cards. They're in your pocket. Oh. Hang if on, you what lose, if, the, if referees you know lose their authority, <laughs> Jimmy, if referees lose their authority, it's ruining football. We've had it. What authority have they got? Well, they they're in to charge VAR of the game. They they're can in charge. send someone off. They can give them a red card. They go to VAR for everything. They've got no authority. VAR took that off them. That's a whole part of the efficient of the officiating no point of having the game. Official. We're getting to a point where we're not even going to have officials. Jamie, stay stay on one argument for a second because you're you're dovetailing into VAR. You're dovetailing into the bad officiating. Just for a second, just say that the officiating at the weekend was it right or wrong? Three three red cards. Are you in agree? Are you in agreement with all of those red cards? Do you think it was the right decision? I think the Mitrovic sending off is the right decision. Cool. Okay. Lost, but. Do I but do I agree with uh, talking about a ten game ban? No. Fine. Okay. I, I think that's outrageous. Do you do you think with the ban aside for a second? Do you think that referees are going to get a bit more respect if they start to be tougher on people surrounding them on the pitch, coming up to them, and they use those cards and they say you don't have a second chance, you're off. You can mm. agree with me just because it's me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> don't I, you think I, that would help? I think referees will get respect when they start making better decisions. Phil is a West Ham fan. He's given us a call this morning. Uh, and I imagine he disagrees that Declan Rice uh, would be going to Arsenal and that deal would be a good move. Is that right, Phil? Morning, Phil. Morning, Phil. Uh, morning, Laura, um, Ali, uh, Ray. Hello. I, I think I'm listening to talk Arsenal now. <laughs> I mean, yes, correct. Now you've got Harry Groves on. Why don't you have some West Ham people on? Because I'll be honest with you, there is no chance, and you can record this and play it back in five years' time, that Arsenal will get anywhere close to winning the league, the Champions League. They most probably won't even win an FA Cup or a League Cup. Wait, didn't they period. get close to winning the league this year? Didn't they get yeah. closer than anyone else apart from the team that won the league? Didn't they, they get a lot did. closer than you did? You got closer to relegation, it's, Phil, it's, didn't you? It's, it's, Laura, it's a bit... They had their one chance this year and they blew it. Next year... Newcastle are going to be stronger. Mm -hmm. Chelsea are going to be stronger. Man United are going to be stronger. Arsenal will not even finish in the top four next year. Where will they go then? I, I'm, I'm a realist. I'm a West Ham fan. Over the moon, still excited about having a fantastic few days in Prague. But to be honest with you, I understand Declan Rice wants regular Champions League football. He's not going to get that at Arsenal. Don't be deluded. Is he going to get it at West Ham? The hype. Of course he's not going to get it. Uh, so where uh, would you like to see but him at go? At least he's going to w pick up a cup at West Ham. Where, where would you where like to see him go? go? To be honest with you, Man City are a fantastic side. Uh, I'm not sure they are going to come in for him, but I, w I would love him to go there. If not, to be honest with you, personally, I'd like him to go 
to a foreign club, Bayern Munich or Real Madrid, but it, it looks like he's not going to go to a foreign club. So to, if he's really going to go anywhere in England, I'd love him to go to Manchester City. Why, no, why, do, you prefer, why do you prefer City over Arsenal out of interest? Uh, they've won more cups this season than Arsenal are going to win in the next 10 years. Why does that matter? Arsenal have got a lot more history. I thought with a club like West Ham, you'd appreciate history. Um, well, we've got a lot more history than, uh, than Arsenal, let's be yeah, honest with you. That's, why, that's why I said it. World Cup. That's why I said it. Yeah. You could also but, say but, Arsenal won the World Cup as well with France. Yeah, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm, is it talk sport, Ali, I'm talking to, or is it talk Arsenal? No, you did that joke already. <laughs> um, yeah. When you're talking about attitude and the players' attitude and that team's got the right attitude, which actually maybe like a few years ago, I'd have said they didn't. I'd have said that there was something wrong at yes. Arsenal. Do you credit Mikel Arteta with creating that? I do, I do. I think he's brought some very good young players and I think he's instilled in them the right attitude. My problem is I, don't, I think he has a problem dealing with the big talent and Aubameyang was a, a, a classic issue of that where I really wish he'd found a way to work with Aubameyang and the way to do that is not to humiliate him. You know, once he stopped playing with joy, he stopped being the player he was. you got to remember, Aubameyang has still scored more goals for Arsenal this season, having left in January, than Lacazette. I mean, that's an amazing stat. Seven goals in 15 games. And that was his worst season for us. So this was a goal-scoring machine who's now breaking records at Barcelona. So I don't agree that we were right to give him away. We should have kept him and managed him. Uh, but we've done that, and now we've got to find a great striker. But don't you think that when we did give him away, he wasn't scoring those goals? And that wasn't just for a small period of time. Well, like I say, he, he scored, he's already scored more goals this season for us he, than Lacazette. And he hasn't played since January. Lacazette's not the answer, though. No, so he's not. comparing him to Lacazette's probably wrong. But, but he okay. wasn't scoring but goals, But Aubameyang has scored 90-odd goals in 160 games for Arsenal. Second best record of goals per game after Thierry Henry in, in the, the season that he club. left, he'd scored three. Right. Well, he actually scored seven in 15 games this season. But that, but why? It's a myth he scored three. Well, why? Okay, so why did he stop scoring? And if it's because well, he, he wasn't being... He scored a goal every two games, even at his, he, even at his worst. He was underperforming in comparison <laughs> no, but to this is, There's game. a lot of mythology about this, about Aubameyang. No, it's a not. Lot of, well, there we're is. watching it, but we're watching it. We can well, see he wasn't we're scoring. We're watching it because he was actually feeling devalued and humiliated by his manager. Because it was very kept, bad management. When he, he was kept, feeling pumped up and motivated, there's no better striker in the world. But you can't keep stepping out of line. You can't keep doing that, whether you're captain or not. But don't make him captain. Whether you're captain or not you can't just turn up when you want oh, you don't and, and you... don't you think that Mikel Arteta has probably gone public because it's like this right. is happening so you've much. got Mbappe and Neymar and they turn up late I know Neymar turns up late quite a lot right what do you do you, you get rid of them big difference you give them Mbappe away to Atletico Madrid what do you well, do well Mbappe might go for free you might go right. for free at the but end of the season it, my, if you were the manager of PSG and they turn up a bit late they're not for the game just turn up a bit late past their thing a few times because they're that's part of their if nature got, what do you, you do you drop them if you've got trust in the rest of the team do you drop yeah. them do you drop yeah. them yeah. no you wouldn't but if I think, you've got trust I, think in that's one, I think that's one of the reasons that PSG are not as successful in the Champions League because they don't look to me as if they've got a full togetherness in their squad maybe maybe but I don't think that's down to whether Neymar turns up bang on time or not I mean I literally it comes down to, I used to do this with my own staff right if you've got a bad timekeeper but they're brilliant you basically set a different time for them uh, one guy in particular he was fantastic one of the most creative executives I had he was late for everything he was late for every, every social event every work event so in the end we just gave him a different time I would have said to him Yang, training starts an hour earlier than it does job done matches match day get here an hour earlier uh, and then if you you uh, give him an hour, so you're changing. Yeah, every, but then he turns up at ten o'clock, and no everybody's, there. everybody's <laughs> no? training routine no, no. for one man. Training's still the same time. You just tell him it's an hour earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. That is called management. Uh, I wish it wasn't. That's an hour why earlier. I should be the manager of Arsenal because I'd have kept the batting game. Now we wouldn't even be thinking about <laughs> top four. We'd be challenging for the, for the title. Uh, we've run out of time, Piers. It was wonderful having you on. Well, Thank that was you. uncensored. <laughs> <laughs> Touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you, sweet Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> good times never seem so good. So good, so good, so good. So good. <laughs>